we're gonna show you how to make an amazing Chateaubriand holiday roast. Now we love the Chateau because it's impressive, it's so tender, and you really can't go wrong with a giant filet mignon that everyone shares. We'll go through this quick, but the specific details can be found on omahasteaks.com on the blog called The Block at omahasteaks.com slash blog. Now the reason we tie the roast is to help keep its shape during the roasting process. The first step is to take more twine than you think you'll actually need, like probably 10 times the length of your roast. Start by looping this under the larger end of the roast and make one small tie with it. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You're gonna to wanna to loop the remaining twine around your hand and then grab the other end of the roast just like this and then pull it tight. Now, you want these rows of twine to be about an inch and a half or two inches away from each other. And then just keep repeating the process. Okay, you've reached the end. You wanna flip the roast over, take the remaining twine and loop it back around the top. Pull it through like this. And just keep doing this with each row, crossing twine all the way back down to the larger end. Okay, to finish tying this thing up, let's flip it back over. Make a tie with the original twine that you have left over and then clip off the excess. That's it. Now we're ready to season the roast. We're gonna go with the Omaha Steaks Private Reserve Dry Rub. It's the perfect roast seasoning and we're not gonna be shy with it. It's a rub, so we really wanna cover the roast thoroughly. Get all of the sides just like this and maybe roll it around a bit just like this. Okay, let's pop this into our baking pan. It's got a raised rack on the inside. And then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about 12 to 18 hours. After it's done roasting, we're gonna finish it with the broiler. That's gonna give it a nice, delicious brown crust on top. As that's roasting, we're gonna pass the time by whipping up an amazing cranberry sauce to top the roast. It's got some sweetness, a little acidity, and that balances out the richness of the beef roast. We're gonna start by dicing up a couple of bell peppers just like this. We're gonna to toss them in a skillet with a little olive oil and get that saute going. A few minutes later, we're gonna add a few more delicious ingredients. A cup of red wine, a little red wine vinegar, a little white sugar, a couple of teaspoons of yellow mustard seed, and now we're gonna add some berries. We're gonna do some dried cranberries as well as some dried currants, followed by a little salt. Let's stir that up and bring it to a boil, and in a few minutes, we'll just let it simmer. You can set the cranberry sauce aside. Let's get back to the roast. It's been a couple hours, we've finished it under the broiler and removed the twine. Now, after it rests for about 15 minutes, we can go ahead and start carving. All right, as you can see, things are looking really good so far. We roasted it slowly, so we got the tenderness we want in a roast. It's gorgeous to look at, it's amazing to smell, and of course, it's gonna taste incredible. Again, your guests are gonna think you're some kind of amazing hero. Let's add some cranberry sauce on top. This is looking great. And it's really not that hard. Again, all of the details are on our blog. We call it the block as in the butcher block and it's located on omahasteaks.com slash blog.